Uh, my name is Celeste Young, and I'm a mindfulness meditation teacher, and I also teach a practice called loving kindness. Anybody ever heard of that practice, loving kindness? Oh, good. I get to be the first person to introduce you to it. So I've been practicing meditation for 14 years, and I teach ongoing at Insight LA, and we're based in Santa Monica, and we have uh, locations throughout the greater LA area. So. If you like meditating today, you want to learn more, you want to practice with others, you want to come to a class, I teach about four classes a week and I work with individuals privately and teach meditation at different companies throughout the LA area because mindfulness has really become something that people have started to recognize as a, a strong value, really, in the larger culture. So how many of you uh, are familiar with this term mindfulness or have heard this term mindfulness? Yeah, so what comes to mind when you hear that word, mindfulness? Anybody just shout out? Being present, yes, thank you. Yeah, she was present so she could answer me. <laughs> okay, anybody else? What comes to mind when you hear the word mindfulness? Purpose? Purpose? Purpose, yeah, so we're being present, but also we're being present with a purpose. So we're being present in a particular way. So there's some kind of, would you say, maybe intention behind being present? Yeah, great. Is that what you were going to say? Intention. Intention, yeah. So being present on purpose with intention. Yeah, beautiful. Great. Anybody else? Other words that come to mind when you hear the word mindfulness? She says school. What's that? She says school. School? <laughs> okay. Because in school you have to pay attention a lot, or because now they teach mindfulness in schools? The second one, yeah, yeah. So mindfulness has really kind of spread throughout our popular culture. And uh, anybody else, any other thoughts that come to mind when you hear the word mindfulness? Yeah. Compassion. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. This is a great collective definition of mindfulness. So we have paying attention uh, on purpose being present in the moment uh, with an intention and also that there's a quality of compassion. So it's not just uh, a peer in the mind, but that the heart is actually involved in our practice of mindfulness, that the heart is part of it. And uh, that's what I want to talk a little bit about today. So that's a beautiful collective definition of mindfulness. I would say it's accurate. There's a lot more you can read to kind of go in depth but I'll just share uh, a definition from John Kabat-Zinn, who is somebody, some of you may have heard of him. Anybody heard of John Kabat-Zinn? Yeah, a couple of you. So he founded a program called Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction in the late 70s and early 80s. And it's kind of part of the, uh, the mainstream mindfulness movement. He's the main person responsible for bringing it into the wider culture and into uh, working with people who are struggling with chronic pain or illness or bringing it into schools, like you had mentioned. And how he defines mindfulness is he says it's paying attention in a particular way, on purpose, in the present moment, and non-judgmentally. So I'm just going to repeat that. Paying attention in a particular way, on purpose, in the present moment, and non-judgmentally. And you'll notice in that definition that really a lot of the elements that were already named in this room just come together. Uh, so, so you do have a good sense of what that is. So when we practice mindfulness and meditation, what we're doing is we're working with that quality of attention. And that's what I'd like to guide us in. So I'd like to just pause here. And this is a time that you can turn your phone on silent or even airplane mode if you want to. And uh, find a posture where you feel alert but relaxed. So you don't want to be so alert that you feel uptight. You don't want to be so relaxed that you're going to fall asleep. So somewhere in between. But some posture that's kind of upright. And then uh, if the legs are crossed, you might try uncrossing the legs and just allow them to rest firmly on the floor. Just kind of feel for that. Yes, and then 
if it's okay for you, if it feels comfortable, see how it is to allow the eyes to close. And so turning your attention inward. Maybe for the very first time today. And I just invite you to notice the sounds in the room. Notice how they arise and pass away. And noticing the sounds outside the room, just allowing it to be vibration, reaching the ears. See what it's like to relax. That tendency to interpret the sound or comment on it, just allowing it to be sound. Sounds of this moment. And then bringing your awareness to the body. You might just notice where the sits bones are resting on the chair. And bringing some attention to the felt sense of that. And then feeling the feet. Notice where the feet are touching the floor. where the back is resting on the chair. Maybe you notice it's comfortable or uncomfortable. Just allowing it to be as it is. Noticing the sensation, pressure. Maybe you're aware of warmth and coldness. your awareness resting in the body, beginning to notice, if you haven't already, that the body is also breathing. And the body breathes without your having to do anything at all. It's already here, we just barely notice it. So maybe you feel your breath in your belly, or maybe you notice it in your chest. Or maybe you experience when the whole body is breathing, or maybe you notice it just below the nostrils. And just lightly resting your mindful awareness there. So now we're just keeping the breath company with our attention. where your attention is right now. 
And if you find the attention has wandered from the breath, maybe you're lost in a thought or a succession of thoughts, and seeing what it's like to notice thinking and gently but firmly guide your attention back. So not following the thoughts and also not pushing them away, just notice. And then gently coming back to the breath of the body. And the feeling of your sits bones on the chair. And so whenever you're ready, just gently beginning to open the eyes if the eyes are still closed and coming back. And as you open the eyes, maybe take a moment and just look around the room. And let's see if there's anything that you notice that you didn't see before. Anything that you're aware of that you hadn't noticed before. Anybody want to just shout out anything that you're noticing that you didn't see before you closed your eyes? See, one of the things about me, I teach several times a week and I'm very patient, so I'll just sit here quietly until you talk to me. <laughs> 